Hi, Year 12 Maths General students. Uh, this video is on a topic test for uh, loans, investments and annuities, uh, which is topic one of Unit 4 for the Queensland General Maths Syllabus. Um, I've put together 15 questions, simple familiar, complex familiar and complex unfamiliar um, for you to try. You're welcome to pause at any stage to attempt them and I'll talk you through um, how to do the questions and hopefully you get um, some success out of trying them. Again, these questions were written um, by looking at the types of questions that QCAA have released in their sample assessment um, to get a good idea of what their questions might look like. Um, and you'll find a word version copy of these questions at the bottom of this video in the description for you to download and use at your discretion. Okay, um, question one is simple familiar. We're looking at a graph here showing the progression of a reducing balance loan over time um, in terms of the balance owing and the times in months. By looking at the graph, you have to state the loan amount that was borrowed and using the graph, determine the approximate number of years it takes to pay off half the amount. All right, press pause, have a go, and we'll check in shortly. Okay, so um, looking for the amount that was borrowed, um, that would be at time zero. So if you have a look at the top here, um, you should be able to interpret that $90,000 was borrowed. Okay, and to use the graph um, to figure out uh, how long it would take to pay off half the amount? Well, half is 45,000. So um, interpolating on the graph, just going across and down, um, that's approximately 80 months. And you had to convert that into years, so that's six years and eight months. Moving to question two, also simple familiar. Uh, we've got Danny Boy, who's depositing $8,000 into a bank account and it pays simple interest at a rate of 5.6% per annum. You have to construct a recurrence relation model for the financial situation. Use this model to determine the value of Danny's investment after two years. And then part C, how many years will it take for his investment to exceed $12,000? Okay, so have a think about um, what we know about recurrence relations with simple interest. Um, can you use that then to find um, the value of his investment after two years? Again, using the recursion model, you should be able to um, pump out those iterations until you get over $12,000. Press pause and have a go. Alright, a really good idea um, to highlight any important information in the question itself. So our study amount is um, $8,000. Simple interest, really important, don't use compound interest. And your interest rate of 5.6 per annum. Um, recall that your simple interest recursion model is AN plus 1 equals AN plus I, where I is the amount of interest that's being um, added on. So um, the amount of interest is your interest rate over 100 times the initial amount invested here. For A, plugging in those values into my recursion model, if my initial amount's 8,000 and my interest is 5.6, that means my interest value that's being added on at every recursion is $448 giving our recurrence relation of a n plus 1 equals a n plus 448. For b, we're simply using this recursion now. Initial period, um, we're putting in the 8,000. It's growing by 448 after every recursion, so after every year. So after the first year, um, we'll have 8,448. After the second year, he should have a balance of $8,896. For part C, we kind of keep this recursion going until um, we get over that $12,000. So if you keep adding on the $448, 
um, you'll eventually find that after the ninth year, it'll go past that 12,000. Now remember with your calculators, um, you can input this so you're not calculating, like you're not entering in every value each time and adding on 448. Easy way to do it um, with recursion is to enter in your starting amount, press equals, and then add on what you want continued for every calculation. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, ninth recursion. It goes over that $12,000. Question 3 is a simple familiar and we're given a recurrence relation to describe the balance of an investment account after consecutive quarters. Referring to the recurrence relation above, you need to state the amount of money deposited into the investment account at the beginning of the investment. So what's the initial amount? State the value of regular quarterly deposits made during the investment. Use recurrence relation to determine the balance of the investment after one year. And can you calculate the annual or nominal interest rate applied to the investment? So have a look at the recurrence relation that you've been given. What details does that tell you about the investment itself? All right, have a go at the question and we'll check in with your attempt very shortly. Okay, so um, looking at the information we're given, the initial amount A0 is $3,000. So that helps us answer A. Uh, so $3,000 is the invested deposit. Because we're looking at um, a recurrence relation for an investment annuity, you know that this formula is available on your formula sheet. Okay, so that helps us break down what this recurrence relation is showing us. So the 1.00625 is our um, R value or rate, and the plus 800 on the end there are the regular deposits, the plus D of that formula. So this helps us answer part B. $800 are the regular quarterly deposits. For part C, to determine the balance after one year, we simply use this formula. Again, using our calculators is the easiest way. So enter in your initial investment. We're going to multiply it by the 1.00625 0625 every time and add on $800 after every compounding period. So after one iteration, two, three, four, and we have our balance after one year because there are four quarters in one year. For part D, this is where we pull apart the R value of 1.00625 0.00625, knowing that this is made up um, in this way, where it's 1 plus our nominal or annual interest rate divided by 100 by the number of compounding periods. And we know that the compound periods per year is 4 because it's quarterly. So if we sub all those values in, it's simply a matter of solving the equation for i, and hopefully you end up with um, an interest rate of 2.5% per annum. Moving on to question four now, another simple familiar. We've got Luke, who's taking on a loan to buy a car for 18,000 uh, from a bank at 3.25% per annum, compounding fortnightly. Luke makes repayments of $155 per fortnight to pay off the loan. We need to develop a recurrence relation that can be used to describe the balance of the loan at the end of each fortnight. We're then going to use the recurrence relation in part B to determine the balance on the loan after half a year and then calculate how much interest he'll pay back after that half a year's gone by. So it's a loan scenario. Is there a recurrence relation for the loan scenario on your formula sheet? Have a look. Um, what components of that formula do you need? Then how can you use recursion to use that formula to find out the balance after half a year?
Finally, is there another formula that you've learned to calculate how much interest is paid between two known periods of time during the loan? Give it your best go and check in with the answer shortly. All right, so first thing, I would always highlight the important information and annotate it, what's it telling you. Um, make sure you write down your important facts. Um, now the formula you'll use is a recurrence relation for reducing balance loans on your formula sheet. Okay, and substituting in uh, the relevant values uh, like your R value and your capital R value. So little r is the rate that's being applied to the loan itself. So remember we find that from taking the interest rate and dividing it by 100 by the number of compounding periods and there's 26 fortnights in a year. Um, so that gives us a rate of 1.00125. Our regular repayments, the capital R is 155. So therefore our recurrence relation once we substitute those values in is AN plus 1 equals 1.00125 times AN minus 155. For part B, we've got half a year worth of repayments, so that's 13 fortnights. So we're after the balance, after 13 recursions. So really easy to set up in your calculators again. So we put in our original amount. So it's stored. Then multiply it by the rate. and subtract the repayments that are being made. So then that will work through your recursion. So first fortnight, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth fortnight. The balance will be $16,264.52. Moving on to part C, to work out the interest paid, remember that's um, the current balance that we have minus, um, in this case, the initial value that was borrowed plus the number of compounds that have happened by the repayment value. So the current balance is 16,264.52 minus the amount that was borrowed, add on those payments. So that gives us an interest um, that's been paid to the bank of $279.52. Okay, question five. We have Jane making an investment of $6,500 at an interest rate of 6.8% per annum, compounding quarterly. She also makes regular quarterly deposits of $1,000. Determine the number of years it will take for the value of the investment to exceed $21,000. Okay, so here we're talking about investment scenario. Um, do we have any formula on the formula sheet that can help us with that? Um, we're trying to solve for the number of years it will take. Hopefully you're thinking along the lines of using um, your investment recursion formula. And you're going to find the number of recursions it'll take to get that investment to $21,000. Okay, give it a good go and check in with your answer shortly. Alrighty, um, again, highlighting all the important information, annotating your um, question itself. Um, we should work out that we need to use our recurrence relation for annuities formula. Um, and remember to find the rate R, you add one to the normal interest rate divided by 100 by the number of compounding periods a year. Okay, from there, um, we're just going to use our recursive model um, to find when it goes over $21,000. So our calculator is a good, um, a, a very quick way to do this. So enter in the initial investment amount, multiply it by the rate, and we're adding in $1,000 of um, deposits every quarter. So um, let's figure out how many quarters we take to get to 21,000 or over 21,000. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it will take at least 12 quarters before it pops over that 21,000. Given that that's four quarters per year, that means we um, will take three years for the investment to exceed $21,000. Okay, moving on to question six. We have a reducing balance loan of 26,000 that was taken out at 7.2% per annum with interest calculated monthly for seven years. Determine the monthly repayments required to pay off the loan. All right, um, so as soon as we see the fact that we're determining the monthly repayments, this should immediately fire off triggers that I'm looking for um, my annuities formula um, from my formula sheet there. So have a go at using the formula from the formula sheet and see if you can find the monthly repayments required for the reducing balance loan. Think carefully about whether you're going to use the present value or the future value annuities formula there. Okay, hopefully you recalled that for reducing balance loans, when you're finding the value of the repayments, you must use your present value annuity formula. Um, hopefully you've annotated your question itself um, to help um, pull out those important facts you're going to use. So the amount we're borrowing is the 26,000. So that's your A value, your interest rate. Um, we need to convert to the decimal interest rate um, and make it into monthly interest rate. So 7.2 divided by 100 by 12 compounding periods a year gives us a monthly interest rate of 0 0.006. Because there's 12 compounding periods and it's over seven years, that means our N value or number of compounding periods is 84. So once I've got all those values, I'm just plugging everything into the formula and solving for N. Remember when you're doing this, um, it's easy to get mixed up in your calculator um, when you're inputting these values. So just do one step at a time. And remember BIMDAS. So work from your brackets in to your indices to multiplication or division to addition subtraction. Okay. So the way I would enter in this brackets, I'll do the 1 plus 0 0.006, evaluate it. Okay, indices come next, so it's going to be to the power of negative 84. Evaluate that. I need to then finish off this um, numerator on top here by doing 1 minus that answer um, and divide it by 0 0.006. And that gives me 65.83, which then makes this problem a very simple solving for M. So I just need to divide both sides by 65.83, and that gives me repayments of $394.96. Um, I can check that with the spreadsheet calculators um, I've used before in the video lessons that I've done for um, loans and annuities. Um, I'll also include a link to the TVM calculator um, at the bottom in the description of this video if you want to use it. All right, moving on to question seven. Uh, another simple familiar. Clara would like to invest $15,000. She's deciding between two investment options and those options are given 3% compounding quarterly or 2.98% compounding weekly. The question wants us in part A to calculate the effective annual rate of interest for each investment and then using a comparison of the effective interest rate, determine which investment option is the best. So again, we're going to consult our formula sheet here. Um, you'll find an effective rate of interest formula somewhere on there. Um, hopefully you recall how to use it and then hopefully you remember for investments how do I decide which is the better effective interest rate 
compared to if it was a loan scenario. Okay, give it a good go and we'll check in shortly. Okay, how do we go? Hopefully you found on your formula sheet the effective annual rate of interest. Um, I prefer to look at it this way. Um, as long as you have an understanding of how the formula works though, then, then that's the main thing. Okay, so looking at option one, when I convert it into its effective interest rate, um, being careful with your calculator input. Okay, so um, working from the inside out, one plus three divided by 100 by 26, put that to the power of 26, minus one, um, and times 100% to put it into percentage form. So that gives us, for option one, an effective interest rate of 3.044. For option two, we do the same thing, um, entering in those numbers into the calculator. For option two, that gives us an effective interest rate of 3.024%. So for part B, deciding which is the better investment, being an investment, she wants to maximise the interest earned on their money. Therefore, because option one has a higher effective interest rate, she will choose option one to earn more money. Moving on to question eight, um, we've got Gary Gaza. He's borrowing $30,000 from a bank at 3.9% per annum adjusted monthly. The loan's going to be repaid in seven years. And here we have a repayment schedule extract that it looks like it's incomplete. So your job firstly in part A is to complete the missing information in those cells. So A, B, C, D. Um, for part B, uh, you need to then calculate the information for the fifth month. So um, complete the statement above there. And then for part C, determine the total amount that Gary will have to repay back to the bank after seven years. Okay, so see how you go with recalling um, everything you need for a repayment schedule, how each of these values are calculated within the repayment schedule. Um, give it a, your best shot and um, we'll check your attempt very shortly. A good question attempted is scribble all over it, I like to think. So hopefully you've annotated important information um, within the repayment schedule itself. Uh, you should be reminding yourself on how these things are calculated. I mean, it doesn't really matter the order in which you decide to find these, A, B, C, D. For part A, uh, I started with letter capital letter A first. And I found that because all the repayment values are the same, that means A is $408.68. For B, we want the balance. The simplest way is by using your recursion relation for reducing balancing loans. If you know how much you started with, $30,000, um, you know the compounding periods per year are 12, our rate is 1.00325. I apply that into my formula because going from month one to month two, um, I use the previous balance, multiply it by the rate, subtract the repayment, and I end up with a balance at month two of $29,376.63. To find the letter C, we're interested in the interest paid. So to do that, um, you find the difference between the two month balances for month three and month two, and then you simply add on the repayment value made. And hopefully you ended up with a C value of $95.46. For part D, a principal reduction, it's simply the repayment made minus the interest paid back to the bank. So the principal reduction for capital letter D is $314.23. For part B, not C, filling in that fifth month schedule, 
hopefully you just applied all of these formula correctly again. So finding a repayment of $408.68, interest paid $93.43, principal reduction $315.25, and a balance of $28,433.93. Okay, and they're all the calculations that I made there. For part C then, the total repaid to the bank, um, because I'm making 84 payments in total over those seven years of $408.68, that means altogether um, I'm paying $34,329.12 back to the bank. Um, I've checked all of my answers using um, the spreadsheet calculator. Um, which is also available in the description below this video. Um, you feel free to use it for any financial calculations that you want to check um, in terms of a loan scenario. Moving on to question nine, the last of our simple familiar. A business wants to set up a perpetuity so that the interest earned can be used to help fund apprentice university fees. If 95,000 was invested into an account that pays interest of 2.8% per annum compounding quarterly, determine what quarterly payments could be withdrawn during any year to make this happen. Okay, so what is the perpetuity? Um, how do I work out the payments? Are there any formula associated? So have a good think, have a look at the question and we'll check in with your answer compared to mine. Hopefully you can recall that a perpetuity is a payment value that you can take out of the investment account that's equal to the amount of interest that accrues in the account. So as a result, the balance of the account remains the same. Um, if you take out less than the perpetuity, you can even still earn money in the investment. To calculate a perpetuity payment, which is represented by a couple R, we take the decimal interest rate um, as per compounding period, so in this case it's 0 0.007, we multiply it by the account balance. Okay, so in this scenario we've got $120,000 invested, so that's our A value. Our decimal interest rate after we convert it from the nominal, taking into account the quarterly nature of it, we should have a decimal interest of 0 0.007, so if I simply multiply those values together, you should work out that $840 could be withdrawn in order to maintain that balance. Um, I just checked it using the TBM calculator that you'll find below in the description. All right, question 10, first of our complex familiar questions. We've got Belinda taking out a loan of $6,000 over five years, which compounded monthly. A total of $7,253.32 was repaid back to the bank. Determine the annual interest rate Belinda was charged from the bank. Because I don't have any repayments involved, it's simply just using a compound interest formula, which you'll find on your formula sheet. Hopefully you can recall how to use that and how to solve for your annual interest rate. Give it a go and we'll check in with your answer shortly. Okay, so hopefully you found the compound interest formula on your formula sheet okay. Um, we're interested in solving for I. We know A, our final balance. We know P, our principal or original investment amount. Um, within that, we need to figure out um, N, the number of compounding periods. So that's the fact that it was five years and Compounding monthly means it's getting compounded 12 times a year. So altogether, that loan will be hit with 60 compounding periods. Once I substitute in all of those values into my formula, um, I'm solving for I. However, I've just popped in um, the decimal rate conversion of I um, because it's just a lot easier um, to comprehend how to do it. So once I sub in everything, simplify what I can, um, evaluate what I can, and eventually when you start moving things to the other side, so we divide by 6,000, then take the 60th root of 1.2089. Eventually, 
one by one after you move these different operations across the other side of the equation you end up with i and hopefully you got a nominal or annual interest rate of 3.8 percent per annum moving on to question 11 we have sal whose employers have been depositing 9.5 five percent of his annual salary of eighty six thousand into a superannuation fund since he began working for them 15 years ago the super fund earns an interest rate of 2.4 percent per annum paid quarterly and on retirement he wants to use the entire balance um, for 10 years determine the quarterly withdrawal payments he can afford to take out over this period of time so hopefully you're thinking about the fact that there are two parts to this problem there is no initial investment amount however there is the deposit phase um, where these employers are depositing in regular amounts over 15 years which is then taken over by a withdrawal phase uh, for the next 10 years and you have to determine the quarterly withdrawal payments he can afford. So think very carefully about the formula you can use from your formula sheet to help you solve this problem. Give it a red hot go and we'll see how you went very shortly. This is a deposit phase investment scenario, which then moves into a withdrawal phase investment scenario. So considering that, the 9.5% of the 86,000 annual salary. So he's having regular quarterly payments of $8,175. So for the deposit phase, we're finding 15 years worth of quarterly deposits. So that means 15 by four gives us number of compounding periods N of 60. Our deposits, which is our M value in the formula, uh, 8,175 and we should be using the future value form of the annuities formula from your formula sheet because we're starting with zero balance we simply just use that formula so plugging all these values in entering in them really carefully in the calculator you should end up with a balance after 15 years of 588,000 $311.71. Once we move to the withdrawal phase, um, so he's reached the end of the 15 years, he now wants to start taking out money for 10 years. Okay, um, so at the end of that 10 years, he wants to end up with a zero balance. We still need to use the future value form of the annuities formula. However, you need to combine it with the compound interest formula because the balance that's remaining in the account is still earning interest over those 40 compounding periods. So um, we use this combination formula, uh, the future withdrawal phase formula uh, that we learned earlier in our lessons. Uh, we substitute in what we know. So our principal is how much he's earned previously from the 15 years of deposit phase. So we put that in, our interest decimal amount doesn't change, it's 0 0.006 and it's um, the 10 years quarterly gives 40 compounding periods. So once I chuck all of that into my formula, evaluate what I can and then solve for M, hopefully you ended up with quarterly payments of $16,585.80. Alright, question 12. But Johnny's got a choice of two loans from a bank. Bank A is offering 4.4% per annum adjusted quarterly. Bank B is 4.3% per annum adjusted monthly. If he's borrowing $5,000 over three years, determine which loan will be better for him to accept using mathematical reasoning. Okay, so have a think about how could you compare these two bank loans considering his borrowing $5,000. Are there any formula involved that you could use? Have a think, give it a go, and we'll see how you went. All right, so I can think of three ways you can do this question. There's probably more, but these three ways are how you could approach the question. Method one, you could use compound interest formula. So comparing bank A to bank B, 
work out the balance that Johnny would pay after the three years. So take into account all the different features of the loan there. Bank A, he would pay back $5,701.43. Bank B, he would pay back $5,687.14. Therefore, based on the amount that he has to pay back, he'd be better off choosing Bank B because he has to pay less to the bank. The second method you could use is using the effective interest rate. So again, by changing those nominal or annual interest rates into the effective interest rates, um, considering their compounding periods, using the formula found on your formula sheet, you should end up with Bank A having an effective interest rate of 4.47%. Bank B having an effective interest rate of 4.39%. Therefore, Johnny should choose Bank B because he'll pay less interest on a loan given it has a lower effective interest rate. The last method you could use is by recursion. And I don't know why anyone would ever do that that way, but you can still use it. Um, so for Bank A, once you set up your recursion relation, Recursion relation for bank A compared to bank B, have a look at them. For the three years of the loan, for bank A compounding quarterly, that means we need to do 12 recursions to find out how much you would owe at the end of the loan. For bank B, um, over that three years, considering there's 12 months per year, um, we need to find the 36th recursion of that formula. So again, you'd end up with the same balances as if you use the compound interest formula. And based on that, he should choose bank B because he's paying less back to the bank. Okay, moving on to question 13. Um, we've got Jess who invests $60,000 into an account where she earns 5.3% per annum compounding monthly. She makes regular payments of $1,400. After eight years, she wishes to use the investment as extra income for the next five years until the balance gets back down to $50,000. You need to calculate the monthly payments she would receive. So here we're considering um, an investment scenario. From the information we're given, um, there's a deposit phase, and then after a certain amount of time, there's the withdrawal phase. Um, so hopefully that should give you some clues on which formula you need to use to solve the problem. Okay, give it a go and um, we'll check in shortly. All right, sifting through the information in the question that we're given. The deposit phase, she's investing $60,000 um, and it's earning interest and there are regular payments being made. So that happens for eight years. Then she moves on to withdrawal phase for five years, and that withdrawal phase continues until the balance gets back down to 50,000. We need to figure out the monthly payments she'd get from that. So to start with, um, we need to know how much is gonna be in the account after that eight years of, of deposit phase. So given all of our facts, um, we've transferred our interest rate into the decimal monthly interest rate. Um, the eight years of 12 compounding periods per year gives um, a total compounding periods of 96. We need to use the future value deposit phase formula. So that takes into account the interest being earned on that initial investment of 60,000 with the compound interest formula as well as the regular deposits um, being made during that eight years. So once you sub all those values in, um, it's a simple matter of evaluating everything very carefully with your calculator, and you should end up with an account balance of $258,538 in the account after eight years. Then moving to the withdrawal phase of this, um, she's withdrawing for five years and she wants to withdraw until the balance gets down to 50,000. So we move to using our future value withdrawal phase formula where 
the amount in the account still earning interest. So we use the compound interest for that part and we're subtracting the payments we're taking out for the five years. So substituting in those values, we want to end up with an account balance of 50,000. Um, we carry the balance accrued from the first eight years in the deposit phase as our principal, and we're solving for M. So my advice is to evaluate what you can make it really simple for yourself and then you're simply solving an equation by moving across some simple operations to solve for m and you should end up with monthly payments of four thousand one hundred eighty four dollars and ninety eight cents okay um, moving on to the complex unfamiliar questions we have peter he's depositing twenty thousand dollars into an investment account at 2.95% per annum compounding fortnightly. He makes regular payments of $600 per fortnight for 10 years. After this time, so after the 10 years, he then wants to use the investment as extra income and he wants to make regular fortnightly payments of $300 without affecting the balance of the investment. With mathematical reasoning, explain to Peter whether this is possible or whether he needs to adjust the amount he's withdrawing. So to address the first part of this problem, hopefully you're thinking along the lines of a deposit phase of an investment account because we need to work out how much he accrues in the account over the first 10 years. And then because he's using the investment as extra income, he wants to take out payments of $300 without affecting the balance of the investment. Hopefully that triggers that we're talking about a perpetuity here. Think about how you would then assess whether this fortnightly payments of $300 is possible in order to keep the account as a perpetuity. All right, give the question a go. Uh, think carefully about the formula you're going to use for this and we'll check in shortly with your attempt. Okay, so after highlighting all the important information to yourself, we need to look at initially how much is he gonna be able to save to over the 10 years of this investment. So given we've worked out all the correct um, values to do this, we need to use the future value deposit phase formula Okay, we've got a decimal interest rate of 0.001135. The number of compounding periods is 260, considering fortnightly over 10 years. Once I substitute all those values in, being very careful with the calculations on your calculator, hopefully you find that he'll have an account balance of $208,182.31 after the 10 years. Now thinking about how um, this would work as a perpetuity, we then need to see how much could be withdrawn in order to um, keep this as a perpetuity. So using the fact that um, withdrawals for a perpetuity is the decimal interest rate times the account balance. Um, substituting in those values, we find that he could only take out payments of $236.29. So from there, we need to conclude that he could not take out withdrawal payments of $300 and he would have to adjust this to be the $236.29 in order for him to maintain that balance of $208,182.31. Okay, last question. We have Complex Unfamiliar where Jordan is looking around for a home loan and has two options when borrowing $580,000. Loan option one is a reducing balance loan at 3.51% per annum, fixed term of 20 years, fixed repayments with quarterly repayments of $10,120.56. No extra repayments are allowed and one lump sum payment of up to 20,000 is allowed after the first five years of the loan. Loan option two, 
we have also a reducing balance alone. It's 3.62% per annum over 20 years um, with minimum monthly payments of $3,399.64. Extra repayments are allowed and Jordan thinks she can afford $3,500 per month, um, which would allow her to pay off the loan two years earlier. However, in this one, no deposits or lump sum payments are required. You have to provide Jordan advice on which loan she should choose and make sure you justify all decisions made using mathematical reasoning. So in this case, you need to think very carefully about how you could compare these two loans, what formula are you going to use, and then how you're going to decide which loan is going to be the better option. All right, so give it um, a good crack and we'll check in with how you went. Um, momentarily. Okay, so for the purposes of this question, um, I considered how much she would pay back to the bank over the total period of the loan and made my decision from there. Now, considering what happens in loan option one um, is a little bit more complicated than loan option two. Um, firstly, in option one, I need to consider um, how making a lump sum repayment would help her save money over the 20 year fixed term loan. Okay, so knowing that she's going to pay um, $10,120.56 for the five initial years as a condition of the loan, um, that would mean all up she would pay $202,411.20 during that first five years. If she were to put in that $20,000 lump sum, we then need to find the new repayments she would make for the remaining 15 years. So to do that, we firstly need the balance after the first five years. So to work that out, um, I would use the future value formula to find the balance. So considering that she's making um, payments of $10,120.56 to reduce that loan, as well as the loan earning interest on the $580,000. After five years, she would have a remaining balance of $470,243.44. Okay, at this point in time, she minuses off the $20,000, which brings the balance down to $450,243.44. So this means from there we need to find her new repayments. So we'll use the present value formula here of the annuities formula. So given that our new loan amount, even though the loan is still ongoing and we look at it that way, um, is $450,243.44. And we pop that in as well as the interest rate that we know. Um, the next 15 years of the loan means that there's 60 compounding periods. Once we put all that into the formula and solve for the repayments, that means her new repayments will be $9,676.41. So if she's making that over the next 15 years, that means she's paying back to the bank another $580,000. $584.60. So adding that to the total amount she paid during the first five years, the whole total for option one that she pays back to the bank is $802,995.80. Option two is considering that she's going to pay what she can over the 18 years since she's saving two years on her loan. So that's $3,500 for 216 repayments, which means she's paying $756,000 back to the bank. So given that, she's better off choosing option two because she pays less money back to the bank. Okay, so some of those last questions were quite difficult. Um, you need to just think very carefully about the formula and um, what you're trying to find 
Um, hopefully though, by completing this, this gave you more confidence with your loans, investments and annuities, and you feel very prepared for your upcoming assessment. Okay, thanks, Hitos.